when you have a YouTube channel of roughly 41,000 subscribers, lots of very wonderful things happen. You get the opportunity to hear from folks that you are helping, and you also get a lot of hate. <laughs> what we're going to do today is we're going to talk with the three amigos, and we're going to just do our best to highlight how to turn 2023 into your best year yet, whatever that means for you. In order to do that, I need to bring on Matt, the Lumberjack Landlord. How are you doing? I'm doing super great. And Dion, how are you? Howdy. I'm marvelous. So folks, let's 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 talk about, you know, what would be the one or two pieces of advice. So we'll start with Matt this time because I think we started with Dion last time. Uh advice for making 2023 someone's best year yet. Matt, what what would you say? Skill up. Skill up. You need to skill up. You need to get better. You need to understand what it takes to do projects. You need to understand what it takes to do value add. You need to understand, not even if you're doing all the work yourself, you need to understand how it works so you don't get got. That's how it goes. You know what? If somebody, if I and I see it, I literally see it. I see people get quotes from people and I look at the quotes and I'm like, this is such a bunch of garbage. Like a friend of ours came over. She was like, yeah, can you take a look at this quote? I was like, yeah, sure. So I look at the quote and I was like, this is junk. She's like, what do you mean? I go, it's probably 50% more than what you should be paying. She goes, no, it's not. I said, yes, it is. It's yeah. 30 grand. I said, that's a $20,000 project. I know what the roofs cost. Ask right. Mike Zuber. Yeah, you and it, so yeah. I literally, I literally texted my roofer and I said, here's what I need. And he texts me back and he says, uh, I said, so what do you think? I knew the number was 30, what she was given. His exact number was 20,250. So it's 10 go. grand too high, like I said. So skill up, find the things that get you to skill up. And there are, there is really kind of three components. There is one, which is the Mike Zuber approach, learning your market. You must know your market cold. And that's absolutely the, that's the foundation, right? Mm -hmm. But then there's the skilling up of, okay, what are the other different ways that I can now buy? That's the next layer up. And then the third layer is how do I now manage that organization? How do I now manage that process? Mm -hmm. That's where I created my course to fill in that gap because I think that far too many landlords are like I was at the closing table. I literally said to myself when I was at the closing table, shit, I'm a landlord. Now what? I had no idea what to do next. Like leases, attorneys, and all of the stuff. I had no idea what to do next. And so that's the majority of us. And so that's the gap that I wanted to fill. But I think people, yeah. the most important thing about 2023 is you better skill up. Yeah. One of the things I want to say about that, and I've started to say this a month or six weeks ago, is the winners in 2023 are going to win because they're operationally sound. Correct. Easy money, easy profit is over. Mm -hmm. If you were like, if you got in and out of Bitcoin or any crypto and, and cashed out, you crushed it. You got lucky. If you got in and out of Tesla, you got lucky, mm -hmm. right? I think it is all, and whether you're a stock or crypto or whatever, NFT, sports cards, garage, I don't care what it is. The winners of 2023 aren't going to be lucky. They're going to work for it. Operationally yeah. sound. I, I couldn't agree more. Dion, what do you got? The thing that I think is really important to make 2023 your best year is to figure out who you are. Oh, tell me more. So I was at your meetup in... Fresno and you had your after lunch motivational speaker guy come in and he'd like amped the room up. Great choice. Perfect timing. Adrian. Was yeah. that Adrian? Adrian Hernandez. Yep. Yep. Good. I'm going to give, make sure you get, get a shout out to him. Cause he gets, oh, by the way, folks, top. if you're in my course, we've already loaded the videos. Thanks to for millennial Mike. If you ever need to get amped up, it is there for you. Go listen. Right. And, and one of the things he was talking about was his morning affirmations yes. and you know, the, the things he does in the morning to get the day going. And I sat back, I actually, I think I texted Millennium Mike something funny after about, um, it takes me 30 minutes in the morning to wake up, right? So figuring out who you am, I'm not the morning guy. Yeah. All my, almost all my real estate stuff is winding down day, end of day, look at stuff, you know, make off my poor agent knows 10 o'clock at night. It's probably when you're going to hear from me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, they're self. fine because yep. I close on the deals when, when they make the offers. Um, so for 2023, the, the adjustment that I've made that I learned in 2022 is th so there's two versions of 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 this um, the, the zuber way with i have a team i i i don't go and i don't switch out the lights i don't 
you know, change the locks. And these guys that go do that, <clears throat> happy to pay them. Then you have Lumberjack, who's, who's hands in, wants to teach his kids in there, just like literally, this is how you do it. Break it down, thoroughly enjoys it. I worked next to handyman in the first few years of investing to figure out how long does it take to build a deck? Well, and right. now I know what a charge should be, right? And what, what is involved in, in you know, replacing a water heater? Okay, so, so I kind of got the basics. But I'm lazy. And, and you have to know who you are, right? So I don't want to go and do those small things, but I know how to. So when something like a light in a kitchen can be switched out, I can go and do it. I can save $200, $300 and just go do it myself. Mm-hmm. Or... I could hire the electrician for the easy job. So then they're happy to do the whole panel replacement for me. That's a harder, more, you know, job. And so I've justified it to myself that I have a better relationship with my handyman and my contractors because I give them easy work that I could do myself. Right. That was going to make that little shift is going to make 2023 easier on me, better for me nice. because I know who I am. So the person watching, figure out who you are. What changes can you make subtle ones like that, that make investing easier because the easier it is, the more likely you are to do it or more fun, more engaging, whatever part of it is more important to you, figure out who you are and it'll be a better year. Yeah. So my first one is, and I'm going to swear a little bit on purpose. I generally don't do that, uh, but I'm going to say it this way. Own your shit. Right. We, you know, I got a little bit of this from Charlie Munger. There was an article I read the other day that I shared with both of you. It's like, damn, we whine a lot. We blame others. Just own your shit. Do the work. Right. Who, who made you sign up for that loan? Who made you spend that money at holiday? Own your stuff, folks. And again, if you want to make 2023 better, own it. Figure out your lane. Most of you are not focused. I now appreciate that one of my superpowers is the ability to focus. I get it. I am broken in that way, right? If I get lasered on something, it is what it is, but everything I'm very, I'm not balanced. And um, you've got to figure out your thing, right? If it's stocks, do stocks. If it's real estate, do real estate. If it's storage, do storage. Most of you are not focused. Most of you, when I say get a buy box, don't do that. Most of you, when I say a buy box is permission to focus and permission not to focus, you don't get it. You're like, Mike, I looked at my buy box for five minutes. I got more time. No, go away. Drop it. Leave. Don't get confused. Yeah, it's um, 2023 is going to be amazing if you own your shit. Matt, what's number two? Um, So I think in that... I- I mean, largely that's my number two as well. I mean, I think that, you know, I think that people really need to understand that this is why I love that I'm not in the convincing business. I don't care if you pick to do this or not. I don't care. Yeah. Do it. Don't do it. Don't give a flip. I'll still talk about it at parties because people ask me questions and that's fine, yeah. but I don't care if you do it. I don't care if you're going to do it. I'd love, I'd, it's awesome. I'm, I'm super psyched that you're in the game because I'd love to be able to do business with you or, or talk about the same thing with you because, you know, in the same industry and doing the same stuff, it's fun to have friends. Like we, we drop each other texts all the time, like this happened or that happened. And it's cool because we get it right. We get it. We get it because we're, we're all doing it. And so I think that people need to better focus on two things. One, who they're surrounding themselves with and what they're letting come into their universe. Yeah, I think the second thing is, is that you can make the decision like what Dion was talking about. You can make the decision. I'm not trying to convince you. I don't care if you want to do it. I'm here. I'll, I'll chat with you. I'll talk about it. I mean, I'm the broken dude doing four and five hour live streams. Cause I just like talking about real estate. And I literally get up, I stand up from those and I'm like, I'm kind of bent, bent in the wrong way for a while. Um, but I'm just telling you, like, get around other people, be talking to other people that are trying to accomplish the same thing. Everyone else's loss or win isn't a win or loss for you. Get in a, an accountability group, get in some sort of a group where you can talk about wins, where you can talk about struggles, where you can actually have community with people yeah. that have said to themselves, maybe never out loud. My job isn't enough. I don't get, I'm not certainly not treasured by the company that I work for. I could very easily be replaced tomorrow. 
and I'm going to work for this company and give them all that I have for 40 years or bounce around companies, whatever, but I'm going to give them everything I have for 40 years in hopes that I can make it to that age to retire and then actually enjoy my life. Any investment doesn't work when you have such a short time horizon as after I'm 65, like then I'll enjoy everything. Get in the game now. Do something now. Do something that's a side hustle that makes you better, that gives you community. You'll enjoy your life more. Well said. Dan, what do you got? I really, Zuber, I really like your analogy of, uh, you know, Matt, you're not in the convincing game. So I will go to the, the parking lot and find the people who are thinking 40 years, <clears throat> more than 40 hours a week for more than 40 years to retire on less than 40% of what they made and yep. say, there's another way. You can even do it if you're lazy. Here's how you do it. And then we get them in the stands and Zuber, you go, here's how you get on the field. Here's the systems and, and how you how you would actually get into the game. And then Matt, you're, you're here's how you do the game, right? Yeah. I love that. So for me to get people out of the parking lot into the stands, I think what we need to focus on in 2023, the core level is understanding the two things about inflation. I guess three. First, it's going to be there, right? Yeah. We've made too much money for inflation to go away. It might go down. It might go down to five or 6%, but that's still a five or 6% increase. Um, first, I want people to learn that you can make it not matter. If you have cash flow that's producing three or four times what it takes you to live, you don't care if milk costs $4 a gallon or $50 a gallon. It's money's not even real at that point when it comes to the things that inflation drives. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's frustrating when it costs more, but you're still going to have it. So get cash flowing assets. And second, use inflation to get rich. It's almost like somebody has a T-shirt. Yeah, somebody has a T-shirt. <laughs> yeah. And then ask them how they did it. Get cash flowing assets that benefit from inflation. When we make more dollars, it takes more dollars to buy assets. When you own the assets, it's going to take more dollars to take that. So learn those two things about inflation, get out of the parking lot. Yeah. If the, my biggest concern, and I've said this in probably at least 10 videos, is the person whose only source of income is their W-2. Right. Inflation hurts you. Oh, in, in, yeah. right. It, it doesn't, inflation rarely uh, is outpaced by wages. Yeah, rarely, right? Wages yeah. impact inflation, but wages are rarely, rarely out, outpass inflation. Yeah, and I, I love this analogy, right? Parking lot stands field. Uh, I have to tell you, you have the hardest job there. The quantity oh, yeah. of folks in the parking lot are a hundred X. Yeah. And unfortunately they are living in a echo chamber and hence they're, you know, the, the beauty of artificial intelligence, which is software I sold. So I know it better than most. It's going to give you exactly what you asked for. And if you're living out there and enjoying your keg and throwing around the football and you're having your 40 hour week job, and then you get let go. Your friends are going to still keep partying. They're not, they're not going to help you. So again, if you only have a 40 hour a week job, you're most at risk. You, that is, that is not good. Mike, you chose to leave. You chose to leave in five seconds. And it was like, a like, tell me, it was like two, three months where you're like, what am I going to do type of thing? Right. Oh, it was horrible. Yeah. I mean, again, I, I, I was in a career which I would have done for free. I was remarkably good at it. I've done something that near as I can tell no one else has. I took three products from whiteboard to a hundred million software products. And uh, I was e ego class, you know, just driven. I walk into a meeting where I get my new yearly quota. It happens every year. And I got the Don't three things me. I didn't want. Right. I'm like, yeah. I, I told you guys, I didn't want this. And the person that I was going to have to report it to did not like me, thought I was arrogant opinion. He was right. I had <laughs> swagger and I freaking thought he was a doofus. And I'm like, we need to create a package because I'm going to say nice things and you're going to say nice things. And I'm out of here five seconds later text. Cause I left the house that morning going, Olivia, it's that time of year again. I'm going to get my new quota and my new sure. team. We're going to sure. see what's what. You never mm -hmm. know. Some days good, some days bad. And I texted her walking back to my desk. Honey, I'm coming home. I quit. She's like, what? And and so imagine, he, imagine yeah. that. So that and that was a choice, right? Oh, but absolutely. imagine the yeah. scenario that you just gave Dion, where they're all of a sudden their job is gone. Yeah. It's gone. I've I've had to do that before. I've had to lay off over a hundred people. I was in a boardroom 
after the um, Great Recession, the global team was, I don't know, 580, I think it was, 581, if my memory serves. And I had to let 100 people go. Oh, The worst day of my life. I don't envy that. I, I, um, running the company for the last decade, there was times I had to let people go. It was never for downsizing or shift. It was, you have made a blunder that is to such an extent you can no longer work here. And I got to sit down and go, okay, so how are we going to make this an easy transition for you? Let's find you a job, like work with them. I can't imagine going, you've been doing a great job. Something shifted in the market that you can't control. So you no longer work here. That's got to suck. It well, does, yeah. And again, this is suck. why, this is why I tell people get close to revenue, right? <clears throat> Mm -hmm. I had to let an entire business line, uh, product go, right? There was a product that was supposed to be the future of the company. People fought to get on that team, fought. Oh, yeah. yeah. The market turned. It was full of A players. Whack, gone. Nothing I could do. Just had to, they were burning cash in an environment where cash was important. They mm -hmm. were gone. Now we took a couple of the A players and found spots for them, but there weren't a lot of spots, right? Well, and you've already put people in those spots to fill them, right? Yeah, because you because, pulled them out. So uh, you already filled your, and that's like, that is the nightmare, right? Like that's the nightmare. Cause same thing done that with teams. And then you're just like, and at the end of the day, it's, you're the one that gets to do the dirty deed, uh, even though God. it had nothing to do with them, had nothing to do with you. It's just, you can shoot the messenger. I'm horrible. Um, if you the ever want to six know months are going to be full of this, by the way. Yeah. And, and that's the thing too, is I was looking at it and it was like, there's something like, you know, eight or 9 million people that work in tech. And yeah. as you look at that and I said, okay, let's just get nutty. Let's say there's 20% layoffs in tech. That's still only 1.8 million jobs. That's not a lot of jobs. It just isn't. And so while it's, and, and Mike says this perfectly, when we talk about the real estate market, you know what? If you're an agent, if you're a broker, if you're a loan servicer, for you, it's a depression, not for me and not for anyone else. And for tech people, when you think about some of these companies, I mean, Mike, you and I know of having been in tech for 20 plus years, there's a lot of companies that have been living off of fumes for a long time. And now that those fumes are gone, like how many, how many companies do we see those valuations? 4 billion, 7 billion, 11 billion. And now they're gone or they're going yeah. to be gone or they're going to be sold for IP, which is intellectual property. Pennies. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the other thing that Twitter, again, I am not an Elon Musk fan, but something he has proven is you can run Twitter on 70% less people. He's an operator. I already know there are Silicon Valley executives over the holiday season asking themselves, could we really whack 30%? Because again, if you whack 30%, you go from cash flow negative to a positive burn. Well, it's it's, it's weeks of life. It's weeks yeah, of life, of course. right? Months and so of it's life, like, weeks of life. Yeah. yeah, I mean, so I look at it because I want to be really granular. And so that's one of the things we actually developed was basically a portfolio stress test because people are going to need to stress test their portfolios to look at it and say, my cash reserves what I've got coming in for income, how can I then adjust for that? And then scenario analysis, all that stuff, that's stealing a page right out of executive management's book. Okay. They're always looking at that stuff. And yeah, there's going to be a ton of layoffs coming, tons. Yeah. yeah, so the final one for me to wrap this up is, uh, I believe there's one personal financial metric that no one talks about. Uh, and if you understand it and improve it, it's life-changing and that's discretionary income. Yeah. Everybody, most people know what they make. Some people will know gross versus net. Almost nobody can tell me what their discretionary income is. And that's an anchor of my little $99 course, Get Your Money Right. But it, discretionary income is it. If you can double, triple, or quadruple your discretionary income, that's a good thing. Yeah. And most of you have the power to do it. Back to my own your stuff. Audit it. Look at what you spent. Figure it out, right? Dion and I talk about discretionary income a lot, so- Dan, you want to say something? Sorry, no, I, I was trying not to laugh. I did my discretionary income the other day and I was like, oh, should I share that? It's like 13000 <laughs> a month, whether I get out of oh, bed or not. That, that's terrible. It's only- like, This folks, is why you want to own assets, yeah. right? And and so the superpower for the people who not only watch one rental at a time, but are this far into a video. First, 
Thank you for supporting the One Rental at a Time community, watching a video this long. That's great. But second, good job on improving yourself, making it this far into this kind of content, because here's what you've got. Imagine being Zuber. You invested one rental at a time. You probably weren't studying the financial independent retire early community, like it wasn't even on the radar. And you go into work and you, you realize, I have enough money to where I don't need this job. And you quit. And then you wonder what you're going to do. Oh, People yeah. watching this are, you understand cash flow, you understand freedom number, you understand retire to something, not from something. Like, now picture me this year. Great job, loved what I did. But because I'm in this community, I understood work was completely optional. And I didn't have to have a bad day to go, this is going to put a bad taste in my mouth. I'm going to leave before we start saying bad things to each other. I said, I had a great day. It's probably the best day I'm going to have. I quit I'm out. because I was taking in content like this. And yeah. those people watching this video right now, you're on a timeline to do the same. And it might not be to quit, but it might be to go to the job that you really love instead of the one that yeah. you have to have. And uh, good job. Awesome. Well, Dion, where can people find you? Right here on YouTube, Dion Talk Financial Freedom. And Matt? Lumberjack Landlord on Instagram and YouTube. Check it out. Yep. Lastly, if you're still watching, like, subscribe, comment. We are 9,145 subs away from our party in Vegas. Get your friends to join. Thanks, guys.